Hey everyone, so today's video is an updated video on Tamanu oil. I had made a video about three years ago talking about the truth of Tamanu oil and uh, that has somehow been the most popular video on my channel. So three years later I thought I should make an updated version. Now the benefits of Tamanu oil haven't changed in three years. <laughs> it's been, it's the same oil, it has the same uh, amazing benefits. You can check out my older video but I'll just summarize briefly. Tamanu oil which is native to Fiji and Pacific Islands as well as you know India, southern part of India, it has a lot of skincare benefits and it's particularly beneficial for people who have very sensitive or sensitized skin due to eczema, psoriasis, inflammation, wounds. It's full of antioxidants, anti-inflammatory and very nourishing to the skin. Back then my view was that there's only one product on the market which I highly recommend. That recommendation hasn't changed still. Like I still think Crave Beauty's The Great Barrier Relief Cream that's an amazing formulation. It uses a high concentration of tamanu oil in a very beautiful light formulation. But I, I did not mention one benefit in that video, in the video three years ago, because it's a bit, it can be misconstrued and so it can be a little bit controversial. And that is that tamanu oil also offers a bit of sun protection. Um, and the reason that I say it's controversial is because I don't want people to like ditch their SPF and just start applying tamanu oil because the SPF that tamanu oil offers is very low. Uh, so again, if you have skin ailments, skin conditions which you know do not allow you to apply a lot of creams, then tamanu oil or a tamanu oil based cream is going to be very good for you because not only is it providing the healing properties, but it's also providing a minimal, a very limited amount of sun protection. I think uh, even Leah Yu, the founder of Crave Beauty, in a video like many years ago, I think she also said that, you know, if you are experiencing inflammation, redness, sometimes after chemical peels, your skin becomes really sensitive to anything. So you, you can, again controversial, but she, I think she had said that you can probably skip your sunscreen for like a week or so and only apply the Great Barrier Relief because again, tamanu oil. Now three years ago, if you wanted to go and look for a pure, 100% pure tamanu oil, it wasn't available in any stores except for you know some small businesses, uh, online stores, maybe an Etsy shop and so on. But I was looking at it a few days ago and I want to say unfortunately it has become very common. Like many brands are offering 100% pure tamanu oil, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because you know it's more easily accessible. It's become a bit more commonplace. More people can avail the benefit of this amazing healing oil, but the thing I don't like is, you know, <laughs> uh, anything that the beauty industry starts hyping up, it may be for all the right reasons, but many people jump on that bandwagon and the ethical practices, the sustainability of that natural product comes into question. I had mentioned in my last video that the tree from which the tamanu oil, um, you know, the nuts from which it comes from, that tree is considered sacred in Fiji. And many indigenous people, you know, people in the villages who do not have like a 10 step skincare routine, they have flawless skin, they don't have as many wrinkles, even though they are living in, you know, a tropical area which has a lot of sun, higher UV radiation. But in order to produce it, like mass produce it by a lot of companies, I mean, how can you source so much of it? There is going to be a, an environmental impact. Anything that, you know, offers a bit of profit, people or companies, they want to mass produce it. So any naturally occurring thing that gets the label of superfood or elixir, elixir be it for skin or for hair or, or anything beauty related, a lot of companies want to make some profit on it obviously and that's where the mass production of the product starts and it has a massive environmental impact. That's a topic for a whole other video but I would say even though it's very easy now to source 100% pure tamanu oil, if you want to apply it on an everyday basis, I still think the Great Barrier Relief is the way to go. I have 100% pure oil but I don't use it as a daily skincare ritual thing. It's more, I use it more in a medicinal manner, like if there's an inflammation or something then I, I use tamanu oil. I think the benchmark for me to assess whether a product is on its way to becoming mass produced is if now foods on iHerb starts producing that particular oil. So 
the manu oil is available there it wasn't available three years ago another reason why i think crave beauty is some great barrier relief i'm not associated or sponsored or anything by crave beauty i just i'm plugging it in so much so i think i need to give that disclaimer for many of us you know we tend to just buy a product because somebody said oh it's it's so good for your skin it's going to solve all your problems but then when we start to apply it, we don't like how it feels, how it smells, the texture and so on. Applying straight up oil, no matter how magical it might be, it's not a very pleasant experience. There's the smell, the texture, the stickiness with applying 100% pure oil. So, you know, while many people might be buying it, I still think in order for us to sustainably get the benefits of tamanu oil, we need a formulation that, that feels good as well. And so far, it's the great barrier relief and Leah Yu has done an amazing job with that product. I still think don't waste your money, don't impact the environment so much just because 100% pure tamanu oil has become a lot more mainstream. So that was my part two of the truth about tamanu oil. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.